What's up everybody? It's Travis here from Travis.media. Today I want to share with you my six favorite programming languages and why. Now these won't be in any particular order because I just can't rank them like that as they're each different and they have a different place in my career. So I'll give these in no particular order. And this video is not 100% about me. It's also about you if you want to leave a comment as to what your top five, top four, top two, whatever programming languages are below. I'd love to hear it. So let's get started. Number one on the list is HTML. Now HTML is not a programming language, just joking. Number one is C Sharp. Now C Sharp is a statically typed, multi-paradigm programming language developed by Microsoft. And by multi-paradigm, I mean it can be used object-oriented, functional, procedural, whatever. It's versatile and there are many approaches to using it. But C Sharp is such a great language. It feels solid to me. When I code in it, I feel like the app is solid, it's clean, it's reusable, it's easy to use. And if I had to rank these six, I probably would put this up at the top, if not number one. And I think this has to do with me using it in my last job. When I got hired as an SRE, it was a Microsoft shop and everything they did was in C Sharp. And so coming from a world of PHP and JavaScript, this was my first statically typed language in a language that compiled. And the language was a lot like PHP and JavaScript, but it was a different feel. I had to slow down. I had to wrestle with the types and using packages in the different things that C Sharp will give you over a interpreted language. But for me, it's so versatile. You can use it on web, mobile, desktop, Unity games, APIs, Azure Cloud, IoT, whatever. And .NET is great. It works on all platforms. It's well-engineered. There's extensive libraries. It's built with great design patterns. There's async and await. And to me, there's nothing like having a brand new templated C Sharp project open up in your code editor ready to put together. So C Sharp has a special place in my journey and I would put it up there at the top. Number two, JavaScript, of course. So JavaScript was my first actual programming language, which I think resonates with a lot of people because I started out on the web dev path. So I did HTML, CSS, and then JavaScript was that first language. And it taught me variables and loops and functions in all of those programming concepts. But when I started out, I was just doing DOM manipulation, which I thought was the coolest thing ever. And then I moved on later to like Express and the back end. Then after that, I learned some React and I just liked it. And again, you can do anything with it. Mobile, desktop, front end, back end, blockchain, and it's all one language, one syntax. It's very versatile. And again, it's a language that many of us start with. So I think many of us can resonate here. But I do wanna note, after a couple of years of C Sharp and .NET, I went back to JavaScript to do some stuff and I found it a little flaky because I didn't have that static type checking or type safety. So I looked into TypeScript and now I like to add that on top of JavaScript to get that type safety, to get that error message before the code even runs. But really JavaScript taught me those fundamental programming concepts. If you nail down those concepts, you can switch easily to really any other language or syntax. And if you really wanna nail down these fundamental programming concepts as well, then let me tell you briefly about today's sponsor. Brilliant.org is a great way to learn math, data science, and computer science interactively. Brilliant is fun, practical, and has thousands of lessons from basic to advanced topics from computer science and programming, algorithms, Python, AI, logic, and other tools to help you level up your skills or keep those skills sharp. And it's built for busy people like me and you in such a way that you can master big concepts in as little as 15 minutes a day. Maybe you're having a hard time nailing down conditional statements and loops. Brilliant will help you visualize and internalize these concepts in an engaging, interactive way. Today, I spent 10 minutes working through a section about searching arrays and combining loops to match up phone numbers with callers. Again, 10, 15 minutes a day will help you stay sharp. And like I said earlier, Brilliant can help you solidify those coding skills and concepts that apply across different programming languages. And you can get started today for free for 30 days and get 20% off an annual plan by using my link below. That link is brilliant.org slash Travis Media. Now back to the program. So that's number two, JavaScript. Number three on the list is Python. Now that same SRE job that I was telling you about a minute ago, they put me on a contract where we were in AWS and we had to automate a bunch of stuff and we all used Python for that. Now Python is an easy to read language. It's great for beginners. It's versatile and really anyone with coding principles can jump into Python. So my team, there were some people who were like, never use Python, but I've been programming for X years. And by the end of the day, their automation was done. And here on this contract, I saw the power of all that Python can do. 
It's very versatile. Then later I took this Angela Yu course. I think it's called 100 Days of Python Bootcamp. Something like that. I'll flash it on the screen and put a link below. But this course expanded my view of all the things Python can do. It's just so practical. When someone now says, hey, can you write a script to do so-and-so? I just naturally go with Python and it works. Of course, it does web development and all the other things. You can get really scientific with it as well. They use it in data science. But like I've said, psh, that's over my head. So it's readable, it's easy to code, easy to get going, but can get complex if needed. So that's number three, Python. Number four is PHP. Yes, I said it. In addition to JavaScript, I started with PHP because I was doing WordPress development and it just has a special place in my heart. I loved blending PHP with HTML and it just brings back good memories of struggling and solving code. So PHP, it's an open source server side language that powers many, many websites. And though I've joked about PHP in the past, I never really felt all the claims that it's slow and it has a bunch of errors back in PHP 5. I never felt that. Maybe I was just more inexperienced then, but I wish I had a reason to use it now because I don't even use WordPress on my own website and I just can't find a use case for it. And that's number four. PHP. Number five is Go or Golang. Now I've had this secret crush on Go, but I never get to use it. My past jobs didn't use it. And if I tried to use it, they would ask me to stick to the language everybody's used to. My current job does, but I'm not doing a lot of programming with it these days. So it's just a hobby language, but it's super fast. It's built to scale and it's very popular in DevOps. And when I get to use it, I like it. And if you're interested in learning Go from like novice to pro, I've written a blog post on the path that I think is best to take. I'll put a link to it below. So that's number five, Go. And number six really isn't a favorite yet, but is a newfound interest could be favorite. And that's Rust. And that's because I did a course on zero to mastery on Rust and I really enjoyed it. And I think if I used it more and understood the benefits better, I would really like this language a lot. But I really enjoyed the course. I found the syntax nice. It was fast and the package management with Cargo was supreme. Very well put together. So again, what are your favorite? What are your favorite five? What are your top three? Let me know down below in the comments. If you found this video fun, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, consider doing so and I'll see you in the next video.